Hey folks, Tim here, FT Lot for the love of trains. Uh, welcome back. Um, I've been doing a little bit of work down here over the last couple of days and I'm going to show you a, kind of a compilation of what I've been working on. Um, including, yes, the start of the Helix. So, um, let's get right to it. Alright, I've been adding a little bit more to the upper deck here as well as painting uh, the fascia with a test color I have, kind of a burgundy. I think I'm going to like that. Um, some people ask me, am I going to do, how am I going to attach this? Well, if you remember, I have all these pieces um, that I had built into the table already, and I'm just resting or screwing my 1x2s right into the side, even with those. And I'm not using shelf brackets, I'm putting up um, supports on the outside about every four feet. And what I do here is I'll I drill a I drill into the bottom there and put in a wooden dowel and and I also put it up into the support as well and then screw it down from the top and that stays very rigid and it's going to support everything that I'm planning on doing on the upper deck. So about every four feet you're going to see one of those legs sticking down which I don't mind at all because it's a staging yard for me and yes I can still do switching and messing around in there without you know too much problem um, as far as avoiding those posts but uh, no it's it's the bottoms not really going to be finished that much so except for around this corner here which of course you will see no posts coming around on the outside of this over here because that'll be an all overhang uh, from the top here. So that part will be finished and you won't see those posts, but um, this step over here, I don't mind having one every so many feet. Again, it just makes it easier for me. I don't have to buy these shelf brackets and I have plenty of lumber, so I might as well use what I have on hand and save some money so I can buy more train stuff. All right, let's get over to the Helix. All right, so, I have decided to for sure make this first um, revolution out of MDF. I just find that it's nice to cut and if I pre-drill my holes I can screw screw in the screws and they countersink pretty nicely into this stuff. And my track, I'll screw my track into it as well and it should hold it pretty nice. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But I've just been cutting out some pieces here kind of getting them set up and drilling my holes to keep them together and I'm also putting them together with um, move that out of the way so you can see I use another board chunk there to splice these together giving it plenty of overlap so that it has uh, plenty of strength. I'm only using two screws on each side. Um, I guess I could go to a third one, but at this point I don't quite need it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, when I do my upper levels, I think what I'm going to do is buy a bigger 4x8 sheet of this MDF and then I can cut uh, much larger um, revolutions out of it. Okay, I don't know if this will be visible. Ah, I, guess it can. I guess it is. Um, these were these um, I bought some two by four foot sections of this MDF just to kind of test it and see how it's going to work. And because I figured that bottom level, I didn't have to worry about splicing it and having a bunch of stuff underneath the first couple of splices since there was no trains going underneath them. Now, when I start going above where I've already have tracks laid, I may instead of using those wooden spacers, I may go to metal ones, which would be a little bit thinner and I wouldn't have to worry about uh, any clearance issues. But I just made basically one um, piece, got it out, measured my calculations of my radiuses, and kind of plotted them out here on the, on the wood quick with pencil, and then I go out and 
cut them up because uh, if you're using MDF versus plywood, I know they both make sawdust, but for some reason I think this MDF, being that it's that pressed stuff, with, um, it just seems to make a lot more dust. So I prefer to cut this stuff outside, even if it is over 100 degrees out there. It's still better than having to clean up the layout every time I make a cut. Okay, so the other thing about my helix, I know people are going to ask me the question is, what is the dimensions here and what I'm doing is because I have an outside runaround that's going to go around the whole back side of this helix and um, also on my top level when it comes in I want a track to go around on the top side too on the back side of the helix um, my my track that is going up is going to be at a 33 inch um, radius, um, so 66 uh, diameter, and my inside track will be like 31 and a half radius, uh, which gives me, you know, a pretty generous curve. So uh, I should be able to keep the grade down pretty low. Now, as far as the grade goes, I'm thinking it's going to be around 2%, maybe just a little bit above two. Um, I want to wait until I get one more section of this cut here and then I can uh, start setting this up and propping it to see where I'm going to sit, how big my spacers are going to need to be there. But I'm probably going to have four inches at least between levels, if not five, depending on how much that affects the, the uh, grade. Um, and also being that it's MDF, I don't know, I just felt like I'm going to paint the pieces too. I want to have the, uh, I just feel like MDF can absorb uh, moisture and this is going to be in my basement so if I seal it in with paint I think that should uh, hopefully alleviate any chances of um, moisture getting in here um, from just being damp in a basement so um, I'll be painting these as well so let me get out and cut those last two sections I have and that way I'll have one complete revolution and I can start setting up my posts and checking on my uh, grade and just seeing how it's going to look before I start laying track or doing anything like that. So. Oh yeah, always remember, safety first. Okay, so I got that last piece cut and I just kind of threw up some temporary things to kind of see what the grade's going to start to look like and um, let me see I can zoom into this here and you can see you know of course my uh, intermodal cars will be maybe just a little bit higher but that's pretty much about four inches between the levels so I think that would be sufficient even with that uh, block of wood spacer in there which only takes up you know less than a half inch um, but this is just to give you an idea of what it's going to be that's one complete rotation and obviously I need to um, take care of laying all the track work and getting everything mounted because the bottom level is the best or the most important level if you don't have that right the rest of it's not going to be um, on like it should be so um, and I'm gonna have to break this into multiple videos so this will be just the part one another question people may have is the actual um, width of my road bed there is going to be seven inches that's seven inches wide and after I paint it uh, I'll make a template here so I can mark all the track centers so it'll be real easy to lay track on there um, once I trace those on and and uh, so let's uh, let's call it good for the first installment here and there'll be more to come um, thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and next time we'll see if we can't have this painted and start laying some track on it and keep building our way up to the second level so until then as always I'm out.